You are listening to Something Rather Than Nothing. Creator and host, Ken Vellante. Editor and producer, Peter Bauer. This is Ken Vellante with the Something Rather Than Nothing podcast. And uh, for this episode, really excited to have a band, uh, Spoonbenders, uh, out of the Portland scene. Uh, and we actually have uh, the whole band, uh, AJ Herald. Um, hey, AJ, uh, just wanted to welcome you to the Something Rather Than Nothing podcast. Hi, Ken. Thank you. It's good to be here. Absolutely. Uh, Katie Black, uh, guitar, vocals. Katie? Nice hey. to uh, welcome you. How's it going? Good to be here. Good, good. Uh, Buffy Pastor, uh, guitars. Um, very nice to meet you. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Ken. Thanks for having us. And Velvet on bass and uh, filling out the band Spoonbenders. Thank you so much for coming on to the program. Yeah, thank you so much. We're excited to be here. Yeah, it's 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 great to um, connect to your music. Um I love your sound. Um, I've enjoyed uh, your newer video uh, for for Nation. But before I start stumbling over myself and talking about you know your 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 music, why don't you, you the the members of Spoonbenders tell us how you came about, uh, what your musical style, what what you're looking to do, and what uh, what where uh, where's Portland music going to be when? Uh, when things open up here. So who are Spoonbenders? Oh my gosh, really good questions right off the bat. Um, so Spoonbenders started with uh, Katie and myself. So Katie and AJ a couple of years ago in Portland. I had just moved here in 2017 uh, from Southern California, like a lot of, uh, you know, transports do. And uh, I was looking to find some like-minded people to play music and pretty much Anybody I met that said I play an instrument, I asked if they wanted to play music with me. And Katie was one of those people. And um, we got off to a pretty slow start because we both had a very busy schedule. Katie was just finishing school at Portland State University at that time. Uh, But when we did get together, I feel like uh, this idea of what we wanted to do and this sort of road and path was really aligned between what I was interested in and and what Katie was interested in. And things came together so quickly for us. Um, And then uh, Katie, do you want to tell about meeting uh, Buffy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was, yeah, so AJ and I had at that point had been jamming in like her garage um, and really like into the early stages of writing and jamming, getting to know each other. Um, and I went up to Olympia to see a house show um, with a band that I was friends with. And uh, Buffy was actually throwing the show and I had never seen her band before. Um, and I kind of just saw her and kind of like how it go, how it went down with Uh, meeting AJ and meeting Buffy and Velvet it was kind of just like right off the bat I kind of knew that we were pretty compatible and like just I got really excited about them and like really inspired and really just like you're the shit I really want to like have you in my life and then um yeah I kind of approached Buffy and asked her you know if she wanted to be in a band at any point with me or like if she was trying to join a project and I knew she was in Olympia and she was like, yeah, actually I'm moving to Portland like next week. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Really, uh, throwing the show as a going away show. Uh, Cause I was moving out of Olympia and heading to Portland and yeah, just serendipitously just yeah, he came up to me out of all the people at the show. And yeah. I was moving there. And then, then a few weeks later uh, uh, we connected and she was like, yeah, do you want to join the band? Like, we have a show tonight. <laughs> and I was like, sure, because my intention of moving to Portland was just to, like, uh, seek bigger territory of, like, uh, serious musicians um, than what I had found in Olympia. And Spin Vendors was, like, the ticket into that. Yeah, it happened really naturally. and um, Very homegrown. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it was kind of just like a, I don't know. I think it was because it's my first, uh, first experience being in a band slash like having a band where I was just stoked to even play in a practice space um, and stoked to just be making noise for the first time and um, writing songs for the first time that I think I just was like going with whatever gut feeling I had. Um, and I am just super stoked about how it worked out because it was just, I was super insanely lucky. I feel like to meet everybody so naturally. <laughs> I, um, and I appreciate, I appreciate that background and hearing, uh, how, how it came, you know, how the band came together. One of the things I was wondering as far as when, when you talk about the band coming together and obviously what's been going on like politically and the pandemic over the last year, I've been wondering about any sort of mu musical collaborations and, and making art and, and doing this podcast did, for the band. And this is for you as a whole, you know, as a whole, any of you could answer it. Did you find, did you feel like there was like, uh, some sort of momentum that you felt you had going, you know, prior to the pandemic? Did you feel like any point you're like, I don't know what we're supposed to do with this project. Should we be making music? It's really a general question about what's the role of, you know, the art and music you've been trying to do in a, in a pandemic, what's been going on. To kind of to go back to one of your questions inside that statement of, you know, were you, where were you guys before the, the pandemic hit and everyone shut down here in the States, we were on a rocket like trajectory. We were moving so fast. We were playing shows every week, sometimes anywhere between one to four shows a week. It was so crazy I'm and up. so much fun. <laughs> We did play four shows that week. Oh, I forgot about that yeah. month. Oh, my God. That was yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. We would play like six to eight shows a month. Oh, my God. I totally forgot and about that. We were making all of the art for our shows and making all of our merchandise and just the whole like fun DIY project. Um, and we planned our first West Coast tour uh, basing around a festival in Joshua Tree that was going to happen last year, March 28th. Um, and then just about this time uh, last year, we, see, you know, we started to get the news that uh, other countries were starting to shut down and, and the questions were kind of coming into our head, like, do, well, are we going to have to cancel this tour? This is everything we've been working for is to get out and to start playing on the road and, and, and build a wider, a wider audience and obviously have the traveling experience under our belt as well. Um, so it was, you know, devastating isn't really the, the most proper or, um, you know, emotionally fit word to describe what we felt when the shutdown happened, but we were truly devastated. We felt like the rug just got pulled out from under our feet. And we're, I think the band kind of went into a bit, a bit of a depression at that <laughs> point. Um, we all needed to take a pause. Obviously, we're all working really hard in our day jobs and, and you know, at night playing at the bars. Um, and got this news that everything's shutting down. We don't know for how long. And um, now here we are almost one year later, completely recreating and reimagining how to be a band and how to play music in this, in this climate, um, which has been fascinating and slow, slow moving process for us, but still We've been able to pick up projects like you mentioned before we just released a video we've been able to safely go into our you know quote unquote studio which is velvet's garage and record some tracks with our you know pod mate engineer um and still been able to fashion art even though it's so different than before you know it's really we had to change what our focus was and rearrange and, and put our enter energy into different projects basically and on the flip side of that like kind of as like a light at least for me I really like realized how much I appreciate music through this pandemic and how it definitely has given me like something to really focus on and be excited about when it seems like there's not a whole lot going on oh so gosh. it's super hard just because we want to do so much but it's also really like 
it's giving us something to like look forward to and to work hard for which i wouldn't have anything else if i didn't have this band so that's so true mondays and wednesdays the days that we go into the studio to play together and those are like our just our saving grace days of like oh thank god i get to come in here two days a week and play music with you guys like the closest like days that feel like before the pandemic is like going into practice yeah Mm -hmm. yeah just before except well, it's glad I'm glad to hear. I mean, I it sounds for me as far as you know, to practice and your ability to come together and some sort of like aspects of just like together and community. <laughs> like, I need the routine, right? I that's been part of it. Like, I need the routine and know this is going to happen, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then being able to find other ways to communicate with community, like podcasts, you know, like if this is the way that it needs to be done safely, then I can get into that because this you know, is something that fills my soul as an artist to be able to reach out. And I think that um, the ability to communicate, connect, coordinate, and, and share something is such a huge element to producing art. It doesn't have that to have to be that way, but it feels really good for me when it is that way. Yeah, yeah. One of the one of the things I want to do, uh, and I have to say, like, just to 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 mention here, um, I w- we're gonna cut over to one of your uh, tracks, um, "Nation," that I mentioned um, that that you put the video out for. So, um, as I start to talk about music on the podcast with listeners and stuff, I always like us uh, take a little bit of break and this and let's listen to the sound. So, um, we, we'll we'll do that in the, in 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 a tiny bit um but i really appreciate your comments as far as um uh with what was happening prior to pandemic and the trajectory and i saw some things uh you know with with your band Uh, i wasn't listening to material back then but just looking back and just wondering on that question and um i think it's it's kind of like an intimate and and great thing to hear how you've kept things together that you went through the process of being like oh shit you know like what do we do now and and it kept things going um i'm gonna play uh if if you don't mind uh uh, nation we'll get to listen to it listeners will get to listen to it is there anything you uh anybody in uh spoonbenders wanted to mention prior to cutting to the track wanted to mention what? Oh, just Sorry. about the track and oh, just... right. okay. <laughs> well, yeah. like anything in anything in the anything in the universe. Your first your first attempt at why there's something rather than nothing. Mm. Uh, no, no. Um, anything about <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, yeah. I well for, first, first of all I, I, first of all, I, I love the track. I love the video. I heard it saw like video movement that looked like art of noise. I heard some uh some of that uh, doom sound i heard uh i heard uh, mm-hmm. some dead kennedy I, I i just i love the track but uh that's me uh, what 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 were you trying to do with uh nation yeah. why don't you tell the listeners about it yeah um i really love nation it's most of my songs that so far like i am i think like as far lyrically like i kind of think of my songs lyrically because i write the lyrics first most of the time um but Nation was um, kind of the first song that didn't have, like, background um, significance to, like, an experience, personal experience necessarily. It was kind of like um, a general song speaking about how divided um, we are as, like, a nation and, like, how... Um, how insanely like stunted conversations can be um, as far as like being able to connect with others and like kind of like share your views and change people's minds um, and how I think there's a lot of separation going on in um, especially like westernized cultures right now. Um, And Nation was kind of just like a really cool uh, song that I decided to write lyrically based on that but then just like the music kind of came forward because I wanted (laughs) I just like kind of wanted to write a spy song if I'm gonna be really honest it was like I want to write a song that's just like the background to a spy movie and um I want it to be fun and I want to like kind of just have something that is high energy that'll be really fun to play live um 
and it's kind of just like one of the less like heavy weighted significant songs to me which makes it a little bit more fun and lightweight to play if that makes any sense hopefully that uh rings true to the track um but yeah i really i i'm this song was special one to me i think it's really it was definitely written collaboratively as well wonderful uh we're gonna chat some more about nation spoonbender is gonna play that uh right now nation
love that song so much. Thank, Thank you, you for playing our music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rock and rock and roll. I um on playing the music uh on playing the music bit um one of the things that the podcast is doing, I'm not sure if you all know, um, is trying to create some space on the podcast. Uh, in a few episodes, we're going to have a like live version, alternate take. Um, my producer, Peter Bauer, uh, who edits and produces the show, is also going to do um, a couple remixes for bands. But we got some good music, including, well, of course, Spoonbenders. But um, uh, Buell Thomas uh, from the Bronx, who's... Uh, well bred, uh, well bred mongrels. He's doing a cover of the Cars in a cover of uh, New Order. Uh, Gina Gleason, is a guitarist for uh, Baroness, uh, is going to submit some material. Ghost Frog from Portland, Dirty Princess, Portland, Death Parade, Portland. Alicia Angel from New York City, but um, love the music. Um, we're bringing it all together on that show, and I'm so excited to connect with you. Boone Benders and that uh, that in, that incredible track. It's great to hear and be playing new music, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes, indeed. Yeah, for <laughs> real. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's we haven't played those songs live in a really long time, but we still play uh, our old set while we're working on our new stuff. Um, and it's just like, I think, especially with everybody else's music, like all the other amazing bands that have been putting stuff out right now. Um, it's just like, it's, it, I think there's just going to be so much of a bigger appreciation for shows, live music, uh, recorded music artists in general. I think there's going to be a Renaissance resurgence of appreciation from that's like in that realm. Um, I'm just really hopeful for the future of music to be honest um yeah yeah i i i I, I am too i appreciate your comments i wanted to ask all of all of you um and i i it's a challenging question but i i'd really be interested to hear your thoughts on this um and this is kind of like my personal take on music coming out of this and i want to talk about punk like for me punk feels uh, being around punk feels like it it feels like connected to the street right and the culture and like what's going on as people interact with each other and in a period of like isolation um like there isn't as much as the club scene or not seeing live music i've been wondering in my head what does punk sound like when it it's going its own way. It goes into pandemic and then it comes back out. What the hell is punk going to sound like? You know, I think punk is such like an attitude more than you can put it to like a certain sound. And it's like a system of beliefs and more like a way of expression. It rather it be like emotional or political or anything like that. And I believe because this is like such a charged time for politics, I couldn't really say like, what the sound is going to be, but I think there's going to be a pretty big resurgence in punk music because people are, I mean, they're angry and it's a way to express your anger, but do it artfully and um, in a way that, you know, is helpful rather than harmful. Um, so not really saying much to the music, but I think the attitude is going to, is going to be huge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, in the attitude. Yeah. And I'm just interested to hear how, how it sounds. I know with with the the attitude around it. I mean, um, I've talked to folks who are in the punk scene, and punk is always feels political to me. Um, like, and it, I think it cuts both ways because punk has been taken on by kind of like you know, uh, you know, neo Nazi and right. But there's also a strong liberationist movement, uh, you know, that that that's around punk. But it tends to pop up in the political discussion, which goes back to comment uh, comments before we went to the track about tr- in a nation, you know, trying to have conversations, trying to have a common space to be able to discuss difference. Do you think music is going to have to take that role? Because there aren't many places for us Americans to uh, meet out our differences, right? Do you think music has any role of kind of letting out some of that energy or provoking discussion or punk yeah um I think that I think that art as a collective has kind of been um 
something that can bring people together always. I think it's just kind of proven that over the years that um, people from insanely polarized backgrounds um, can appreciate the same piece of art, even if the artist has completely opposing views from theirs. Um, and it has um, somewhat objectivity to it because people like, yeah, people absorb art in such a personal way. And I think it's for everyone, whether or not you want it to be for everyone. Um, I think that I, I don't know if it's going to bring people together to have like constructive conversations. I can only kind of speak for myself and how I how I kind of um, ingest art and how I create art. It's 100% uh, the way that I process and the way that I uh, – heal from things and blow off steam or ask questions. Um, and I think that hopefully that'll kind of like ring true for everybody absorbing my art, but I don't know how they usually, they usually take it wrong, but in a way that I appreciate in a way that makes me learn from my own art um, and see different dynamics from the things that I create. Um, I also just think that with nation specifically, when I was writing, um, it came from the word nation, which is a word that I see all the time. It's a word that like comes up in the media a lot or if in books that I read. But nationalism is like a really weird, uh, it's a really weird concept to me. Um, having a nation and having something that you feel like there is a, you and then other based on where you are geographically yeah, um, yeah, is... Yeah, yeah. That, that's why that song was created because I was having a moment of just like, what the, f why? Like, that's such a weird concept. Like, you know, just going into like how bizarre humans are and how much harm goes from these bizarre concepts that we can't, it's a created concept. So, yeah. It, it is. Uh, I, I, I do struggle with that one myself as, as, as a concept. Um, um, so I definitely hear that and, and share that. Uh, with it just a struggle with identity you know and i think part of the problem is that nation ends up being so militarized or mm -hmm. weaponized as a statement that whenever sometimes somebody brings up nation it seems like a, a battering ram but hey uh we've got big big philosophical question and i got one for each of you it's the same question um so aj katie buffy and velvet all right, you're all artists. Um, I like your work. I like your music. And I know some of you do other forms of art. What is art? Let's start with uh, AJ. Sure. Um, so I have kind of a cheap and quick answer for that. But it's something that I've, I've kind of been mulling over for the past decade or so and I can't remember where I heard it but it's stuck with me so for me I always uh, have defined that art is something that will evoke an emotion so that obviously gives you a wide range of anything you know because you see all sorts of weird funky stuff like for me like a weird funky thing that I would see in a museum maybe is like a toilet is now a piece of art. Okay, well, does that invoke an emotion for me when I see that? Like, yeah, it makes me angry that there's a, a sculpture of a toilet in a museum <laughs> when maybe, a, you know, like a Frida Kahlo could be there instead. But then that also goes to the one of my favorite books, um, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, where the author is talking oh, yeah. about quality, right? And he's like, what is quality? Is it subjective is it objective which is created what quality is i think quality is as real as as gravity or time like it's a it's a concept you know so for me i kind of like to just take a few steps back and say okay art is something that is is bringing up an emotional experience for me and so yes it can be the sunset yes it can be the toilet you know yes it could be something that really upsets me or makes me feel like, you know, my stomach is turning. Um, I think that, you know, there's a lot of power in that. Um, and I like that we as a band, you know, I, I try to implement that when we are writing songs is like, especially with dynamics and, and with different textures, like, okay, 
I don't, you know, I don't want to be manipulative here, but we can manipulate the emotional feeling in a room by how we play our songs. And so let's oh, yeah. think about that and try to implement those settings into how we write. Yeah, that wasn't a quick and like that was yeah, that 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 the fantastic hand. That wasn't <laughs> off the off the cuff. No, I love the emotional content uh, of of art and I think that your example certainly, you know, evoke the emotion. What about what about others? Um you're looking at each other now. Uh, I can feel it back behind the <laughs> microphone. But uh, <laughs> uh, who's next? What is art? Uh, members of Spoonbenders. Um, I think art to me is, yeah, it's definitely something that evokes emotion. But um, it's definitely more of like a processing of emotions for me. Um, processing of thoughts and events and um, experiences. Uh in a way that it actually just like lets me feel less on a daily basis, if that makes any sense. Like I walk out of um, a practice or I walk out of a show a little bit lighter every single time. Um, and it's a way of communication, I think, for me. I really, um, I'm kind of not the most social person and I definitely have like I was brought up kind of like as a loner kid um, and it is a, such a way of like, I'm so used to communicating through writing. I'm so used to communicating through um, reading books and it's a comfortable and natural way vessel kind of like way of me to be able to communicate something that I'm feeling um, without needing to like articulate it as specifically as verbalizing or writing things down, it is a lot more immersive and it's a lot easier for me. Um, and so I think that's what it is to me. Um, and to the world, I do, I do think it's, it's definitely like if it definitely what AJ said, but it's to me, I see it as a form of communicating more than anything else. Kind of, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, no. <laughs> no, thank you. And I apologize to all other podcast guests who have not uh, been in a band because Spoonbenders get four cracks at this. Um, <laughs> who's next? What is art? Um, yeah, so I went to art school for a while. So I've done a lot of like thinking over on this question, you know, just like, what is art versus like, what is craft and that kind of stuff. And I haven't really come up with a really like concise answer yet. Because a lot of times I just want to be like, oh, it's a way of expression or way of getting my emotions out. But sometimes I just write like a sick lick. And I do it because I love the action and of it. And I don't really have any like, emotion that I'm putting into it more as it's just something that I love to do. And also, I think that there's a certain level, at least in like modern day art and um, music, like a certain level of narcissism where we do it because, at least for me in a way, because I like to be able to show people what I can do and what I can put out there. Whereas I do have my like very emotional art. Um, it's also just something that I love to share with others and I love to show um, so for me, I would kind of boil it down to saying like, it is a way to connect to people and it is really emotional. Um, but I don't think you can put one certain label on it because everyone does it for a certain reason. Um, yeah, that's kind of my really little answer to a really huge question. I've been thinking about it for, for a while. Who did we miss? Did it, we miss, uh, um, Buffy. Buffy? So Buffy. Art, art for me is like. So being someone with ADHD, it's like the perfect form for let my imagination run wild. Um, even just like seeing a piece of art and I was, it's uh, having something in physical form just like puts my mind at ease. Um, and, and art is like, art is kind of like a destructive thing too. It's like mm -hmm. destruction of just the dullness of society's barriers put onto this canvas of colors or, or, or sound. Um, and I think the reason why I do it is just so I can like get all these ideas out onto paper or onto recording and decide whether I want to show people uh, what I made or not. Um, I don't have really any ulterior motive of making art. Just I just happen to you know, be in a band and uh, have it, my art be shared with other people. 
yeah it's that uh just that that connection with it uh, the question just to share with you i when i was i went to school at the university of rhode island i had a very influential philosophy professor who did a philosophy of art class and i was not in art school and and had not practiced art as i understood it but the question was asked quite a quite a long time when when i did that work and um i've actually had a couple guests who are artists from that college class come onto the show with the same question we were dealing with uh in the class so it's a, a as a matter of fact one of the individuals that i mentioned was from the bronx buell thomas uh he was in that class and uh today he sent me a a couple of the covers uh to get some uh, music into the episode that i mentioned but it's just so and i'm talking this is like 25 years ago um so mm -hmm. it's it's such a nice connection on the show and, and also to hear your answers around you know each artist is going to say you know why is it that i'm doing this you know particularly that's happened during um the the, the pandemic um one of the 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 name of the of the show uh, uh something rather than nothing and i do have the big question why is there something rather than nothing and who wants to take a crack at that one i think nothing is something in, of its own yeah, yeah i agree with that yeah definitely and then i think there's kind of the um a basic and like rudimentary understanding of you know we're human beings and we have um you know a prefrontal cortex and we're you know such smart creatures and we categorize things and just you know socially that helps us understand one thing or another so it just that's such a basic like that's why there are some things in this room whether it's a you know bed or a desk or whatever it helps to be able to linguistically discuss what's going on but i don't know does it does any of that mean anything to me <laughs> <laughs> not really like i truly believe in um impermanence and so for a lot of the things like the bed and this desk in front of me they're not going to be here forever does that mean that it still holds value in certain aspects you know like for me like they're just it's just a bunch of atoms basically just like you and me are it's like a duality thing it's like yin and yang just like something and then nothing i think humans such have such like a natural desire to have like a purpose too that so much of like our lives for a lot of people is searching for that purpose which could even be just like creating so that they can leave a mark and so i think we see that like throughout history, especially in art, that people are leaving something so that they have this purpose and so that they won't be forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think on that last point, that's a lot of what we see with the artists struggle with, right? Is like a certain sense of like a struggle against non-existence or nothingness by saying, you know, I made this song, like here's this book, it's still on a shelf somewhere. It's just that way of kind of trying to show show that you did something almost um Absolutely. and and that could be a glorious thing it's it's I'm not trying to make it sound trite but i mean it's just it, it feels kind of glorious and being able to do that um uh, spoon benders i want to be able to um I, I was wondering if you could talk uh you know as a whole a little bit more to connect the the listeners to um you know like your band camp or whether some it's your individual uh you know pages or like how to you know download the music what to look for as the world you know opens up a little bit more for music so uh how do folks connect uh with with you as individual artists or spoon vendors as a whole yeah i mean i think the first thing that you should do if you want to is listen to our album um der Mater. it came out last year um i would yeah, that's kind of how I want people to connect with us. I want people to listen to what we make and how we create. Um, and if you want to know when we're creating more, when we're doing more things, you can go up on our um, Instagram account and kind of see when we're releasing. Um, we just recorded three new tracks that we're going to be releasing um, individually. 
once we're done mixing and mastering and you'll know when that goes out if you go on our Bandcamp um and you can follow us on Bandcamp we love Bandcamp um and yeah and we're to be honest like I'm kind of looking for different ways to connect with people um beyond uh Instagram and beyond like summing up these like super holistic people into you know photos and stuff like that so I'm gonna yeah. try to think of maybe more like a podcast maybe like maybe more ways to um let us kind of connect with viewers in a in a really authentic way hopefully in the future but yeah, yeah for right now that's what that's what I got for y'all sorry <laughs> no that's great I want to obviously uh, uh, uh in, enjoy your work and I enjoy you know uh, it just being more re recently introduced to you, your work as uh, individual artists, AJ Harold, uh, Katie Black, Buffy Pastor, and Velvet on in Spoonbenders. Um, really love your music, and I love you considered um, discussion around, um, you know, philosophical topics and thinking about what artists are doing. Uh, but importantly, and excited uh, with, like I said, um, building in the perform performance components of these something rather than nothing episodes. And for our music performers, I'm ex really excited to that we'll, you know, be able to get over the next few weeks, some of your material out and kind of like a little bit of a variety uh, format for folks to, to listen to with other artists. Um, so I'm excited to have this kind of continuing thread and Thank you all so much for spending time uh, on the show. I really appreciate it. I, I hope you had a nice time. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. Thank you, Ken, for sure. Yeah, um, Spoonbenders, uh, it's been great uh, to, to encounter your material and your art. And uh, I'm sure we're going to talk again soon. Thank you so much for your time. And everybody, check out Spoonbenders. It's some great great music uh let's get back into music let's get back into making things and, 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 and talking about our uh, humanness right thanks everybody thank you thank yeah, you bye now have a great night this is something rather than nothing 